So there we go, the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. Focus Plus, 2K DPI Optical Hyper Speed, 14 customizable chroma lighting zones, 11 programmable buttons, a customizable scroll wheel, ergonomic, wireless, no need for this. Okay, it's got this little tabs out. There's this, uh, that new mouse smell. So this card right here. Utilizing the latest technology to deliver gaming mice equipped with the best optical sensors. Left or right handed, MMO FPA. Find just what you need to bring your A-game every time. A lot of big words there, huh? So we've got the standard thing. Cable. Flip it over. Something. Oh yeah, there's a... Okay. So there's this little dongle right here. Your micro USB cable goes in. Over here you can insert the receiver. And I believe this is that additional button that you can add to the side of your mouse. It's got a really clean look, feels good in the palm of my hand. I will uh, add that additional button right here. I'm just going to slide that in and there we go. So honestly, with the box, it shows that RGB bar that's quite visible. But over here, as you can see, this is this strip is quite thin. You will turn this on and find out. Then we've got these two buttons on top. Um, so, all right, so this is this is gonna help us control our DPI. If you're playing a first person shooter and you move from using an SMG to a sniper weapon, perhaps, so this could help you on the fly. I don't know, I'm not that great with first person shooters. So at the bottom, you'll see these two nodes, which attaches to that separate charger. You place the mouse on top of that. I, I got the version that's without it. I thought that was unnecessary. Uh, there's this on off switch. Then L, there's a light, which gives you that profile indicator. Um, so that's what it mentions, the designated colors over there so that we understand which profile it is. Place here, this is where that USB dongle is kept. This can also connect via the dongle and with a wired interface. There is that resistance wheel which is connected with the, the wheel on top. So you can hear that clicky sound right there. Uh, so I believe if I scroll it up towards the negative, we should be getting less and less resistance so you won't hear that click anymore. Just for a quick comparison, this is my previous mouse. This one had this button on top, it did not have anything underneath to manage resistance. It's just going to... So let's just plug this in and find out what this is all about. So just wanted to point something out. I tried to use my old micro USB cable with this mouse, but the port is so deep inside and the way it's made is that you can't just insert any cable into it. So I had to take the cable out. Uh, you would need this cable to charge it. Uh, and you can't just use any micro USB cable unless it's probably thinner than this. Could be a bit of a deal breaker for some of you, but I just thought I'd point that out. This is a pretty nice braided cable though, quite soft. I'm not so sure if this is going to prevent it from, you know, like any damage on the cable inside. I can actually feel the cable inside the soft material. This would obviously come in handy if you're using a desktop. It's got a bit of a rubber base underneath. It's got that micro USB slot there as well. So that about completes the unboxing. Let's talk about what's here. So let me just go ahead and switch it on. I believe it should have some power. The first color that appears on any Razer product is actually purple, whereas they're more dominant green, not like a color like this. And if the dongle is not plugged into anything, it has no programming, it just cycles through its um, colors. So the mouse wheel is tilting a little towards the left. It is not ambidextrous like the old uh, outgoing G900 Chaos Spectrum. So where this scroll wheel has the uh, ability to be a fidget spinner while also acting like a normal uh, scroll wheel, 
It is a bit too rough. It is a bit too tight. So the click on this wheel, like you can hear it, and the click of this wheel. Let me set it at full resistance. Oh yeah, see that? So even at full resistance, just to compare the two. The fact that you could adjust uh, your resistance at a variable rate is a good thing all the way to the bottom in which it has no click at all. Also, it has the RGB light within its scroll wheel. So that's a nice effect. Although I did think that it would have multiple zones within. Another thing that I'm noticing right now, which is a bit disappointing, which I feared earlier was actually the side uh, RGB bar here. Yeah, sorry. Which on the box, as you can see, is much more prominent, but on the device itself, it's a really thin strip. If I just sort of keep it at this sort of a level, I can barely see the strip in, in a darker environment. It doesn't even create uh, like a reflection of the surface. One thing that continues to be common between both mice is actually the DPI setting. So this one is on a horizontal format. This one has a vertical format. Um, although this one has an indicator of which level setting you're at right now it's on three and you can bring it down all the way to one uh this one does not have that feature i think the click is like I, I can't differentiate between which has a better click even if i pick up this very uh non-gamery productive mice um i mean for me clicks are uh, as clicks should be so let's just take out the dongle and plug this into my device. I already have a profile save for this, so I believe it will come into effect once I plug the dongle in. Yeah, and there we go. It has switched over to my green and red theme. Goes with the other items I have here. So what goes well with the Razer mouse? A Razer mouse pad, obviously. Feels like these two items uh, have a bit of an overlap in terms of its feature compatibility because like the surface pads underneath this mouse and this device they sort of integrate well and the overall feel is just generally nicer right uh, the way I configure the RGB setting on this device is that it's supposed to uh, react to the music it's a little overrated yeah, let's just quickly look at the Synapse software and its settings here. For some reason, do not have their scroll left and scroll right settings as part of its onboard storage. So you need Synapse to run all the time for it to actually register your left and right scroll wheel clicks, which is a shame. Uh, but if you look into some other tabs here, uh, you can set the sensitivity of your DPI movements. Naturally, if I click them, uh, you know, low or higher, you can set these from 100 DPI all the way to 20,000 DPI, which I honestly don't get. So I can pull up its brightness all the way up, uh, but naturally that would mean it's gonna consume more power. So let's do a quick test as to how much battery this mouse can give you. I recorded the time it took this mouse to go from uh, 70% to 16% of battery and it came about to a rough five minutes I was constantly using the mouse during that period of time with brightness on full it's about roughly 500 minutes uh, and that equates to somewhere north of eight hours uh, which is not bad I mean you can squeeze more out of this if you keep like the brightness low and not, naturally you're not moving the mouse all the time but even when you're playing a first person shooter or if you're playing a redirect strategy game it should give you eight hours between games which i feel is a good amount of time you should spend playing a game after which you should give yourself and the mouse some rest to recharge so there we have it the razor basilisk ultimate ultimate is um looking okay on my desk i wonder if it's gonna look okay on yours hit that thumbs up button if you like this video do subscribe to my channel because i'm gonna try to put out some more material out soon Bye.